Sometimes for beginning woodworkers and hobbyists, it can be a little intimidating to get started because you think you have to buy this huge shop full of expensive tools and equipment. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you, you don't always have to spend a lot of money to get started. One of the most useful tools you can have in your shop is a good miter saw. And I rescued this miter saw from a fate that would have sent it to the local landfill. It had previously been in use in a professional fabricating shop, but it was worn out and no longer safe to use in a professional environment. So rather than let this thing go in the trash, I decided to take it home and give it a second life. Now there are a number of issues of why this particular saw is no longer safe to use in a professional shop or any shop for that matter, but that's okay. We're going to take care of all those today and put this saw back in service and show you that as long as you're willing to put a little bit of effort into refurbishing a used saw, you can start your power tool collection with little to no money. So before we begin, I'm going to go over some of the issues with this saw so you can kind of get an idea of what to look for if you're picking up a used saw or rescuing one from the trash like I did. Now this saw has three things that are wrong with it that make it not safe. The first thing here is the power cord. The end of it is split and frayed and poses a potential shock hazard or fire hazard even. The blade guard just feels a little wobbly and loose like it might kind of bang around and possibly hit the blade. So I'm going to see about trying to tighten this up. But the real dangerous thing with this saw is the cutter head itself. When you pull the cutter head down to make a cut and you let go, it just stays in place. A miter saw has a spring in it right back here that is supposed to bring the head back up as soon as you let go that will drop the blade guard down and keep you from cutting your fingers off with a blade still spinning but for whatever reason this one just stays down in place and that is a real dangerous situation in fact let's demonstrate that you bring the cutter head down to make a cut You got a lot of exposed blade there still spinning for a few seconds after you've let go of control of the tool and that's a real dangerous situation. A lot can go wrong. Okay, so first things first, I really want to see if I can get this cutter head to move freely. I'm hoping that it's just a buildup of sawdust, sap, and resin from the wood that's in this mechanism that's got it all jammed up. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to take it outside, drag the air hose out there and really blast everything out really well and then spray a little penetrating lubricant in this mechanism and in the pivot pin here and see if that works. Now, if that doesn't work, I will have to take this cutter head apart and go a little bit deeper, but I wanna give the air and the oil a chance to see if that will take care of it. So let's go outside and take care of this right now. now I've got the air turned all the way up. It's high as well go out of my tank because I really don't want to take this cutter head apart if I don't have to, but give it a good blasting and we'll see what happens. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get it with the air for now. Okay, it looks like what I have is this penetrating catalyst blaster. Breaks loose faster, powerful rust destroyer. We'll just kind of spray some of that in here. I'll just wipe up the excess later. I'm just going to kind of spray quite a bit in there. Let's see if this will free this up at all. Feels like it's moving a little smoother. One thing I found when trying to use penetrating spray like this to get something to free up is sometimes if you gently tap it with a hammer, it seems like it helps some of the spray to kind of work its way down a little bit deeper and can help free it up. So I'm just going to give this a few taps here. Don't need to really bang on it, of course, but. See if that feels any better. Looks like we're getting somewhere. So what I'm going to do is spray this a few more times and let it sit for a little while and then come back to see if it's freed up completely. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, so I cleaned up most of my tools there and this has sat for about five or 10 minutes. Let's see how it looks now. 
That looks pretty good to me. Now I did put quite a bit of that spray on there and you definitely want to wipe up as much of the excess as you can because what can happen there is if you leave too much of an oily film on the saw, the sawdust will just stick to it and create a mess. Whatever little bit that I can't get with the rag, I'll try to blow out with the air and, and catch it into the rag. Okay, now that's done, we can move on to the next step and take care of this broken cord here. I stopped by my local Home Depot and picked up one of these replacement plugs. I think it was about two or three dollars. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab one of these online or you could just stop by your local big box or hardware store. They should have plenty on hand. Okay, so for this video, I'm not going to go into detail on how to replace a plug on a cord like this. I've already covered that in a previous video. If you'd like to take a look at that and learn how to do that, go ahead and click this link right here. Okay, so next I want to try to tackle this kind of loosey-goosey flopping around blade guard and see what I can do there. So we'll go ahead and start taking parts of it apart and see what we can find out. Okay, so on this particular model here, there's a screw and I see a little nut kind of on the back side of it. I think if I can get an end wrench in there, I'll be able to tighten this down a little bit and take out a little bit of this slop here, but I'm going to have to remove the blade. So give me a good chance to look at the blade too. I'm probably guessing that this might be the original blade that came with the saw. It's in pretty bad shape. I've got some pretty worn down teeth. There's a broken tooth right there. A chipped tooth right there. Yeah, this blade is definitely garbage, so I'll be replacing that. I think that feels pretty good. There's a little bit of wiggle room here, so I don't think it'll get bound up. It snaps down pretty quickly, and that'll be fine. I could always adjust it more later if I need to. So before I move on to the next step, there's one more thing I need to do here. It looks like there was some sort of a catch or a stopper here for the blade guard that fell out. At some point somebody just found a bolt that fit and stuck it in here. The only problem is they used a really long one and if you're not careful you could screw this bolt in so far that it would actually come in contact with the blade and that would be bad news. So I think what I'll do I'll just drive this in as far as it will go up to the shoulder on the shank, mark it with a pen, and then just cut it off with a hacksaw so I can just drive this all the way in and not have to worry about it hitting the blade. Yeah, look at that guy right there. Much better, just just about flush with the inside still catches the blade guard much better so I could probably put this back together now but while I was at Home Depot I picked up one more thing for this saw I grabbed a new blade while I was there I had a feeling that this blade was pretty beat up and I was right now of course this is an additional expense for a refurbishing project like this on a used tool but here's the deal with saw blades. When you go out and you buy a brand new saw, they usually come with a blade, but those blades are junk. One of the first things you should do when you open the box is throw that blade in the trash or maybe hang on to it as a backup. But even if you're buying the most expensive new saw on the market, you're probably going to want to pick up a decent quality blade. Okay, so the next two steps are completely optional. It's kind of going that extra mile. But if you're comfortable with taking apart electric motors or at least adventurous enough to try, one thing that you can take a look at are the brushes on the motors. Now brushes are a wear item. They will eventually wear out. If you're refurbishing an older saw like this, there's a good chance that they're worn down. Now this particular saw has these little caps here. There's a little plastic cap here. There's one on the opposite side. 
you can unscrew these caps and pull the brushes out and take a look at them. Now is a good time to replace them, but if they look like they still have some life left, you can leave them in there. But we'll go ahead and do that now so you can see what that process is. Go ahead and unscrew this cap here. And the brush pops out. Now if you're looking at a newer saw, some of the newer saws have brushless motors, so this will not be something you'll have to deal with. But chances are if you're doing an older saw like this, there's a pretty good chance that they will have brushes and they may need to be replaced. To me, these brushes look fine. A couple years from now, I may have to replace them, but I'm not going to bother replacing them now. And one additional step you can do as well, if you're feeling really adventurous, is pull the motor housing off, and we can look at the internal components of the motor as well. Should pull out fairly easily. I'll show you a couple things that we can look for here. It will be simple repairs. Okay, so this is the armature. This is the part that spins inside the motor and the brushes rub up against this part here and this is called the commutator. They make contact there. And one thing you wanna look for on the armature, especially on the commutator, is flat spots. You can just kind of feel for them or to look to see if it looks like it's worn or if any of the windings are burnt. If you needed to, you could replace this, or if you really wanted to, or if you found flat spots on the commutator, you could put this in a lathe and turn it and get it in, back and around again. If you don't have a lathe, you could take it to a machine shop or an auto electrician, somebody that works on electrical motors like this and have them turn it for you. This one looks pretty good. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to put it back in. But before I do, I'm going to blow some of the dust out inside of here and inside of here, just to make sure we have good clean contact. This part is a spindle lock so that you can tighten and remove the bolt that holds the saw blade on. It's not really that critical of a part, but I will kind of clean it off a little bit. I'm gonna make sure that that engages back in the teeth there and it spins the blade. Now, if you didn't want to take the motor housing off, I would suggest at least kind of blowing through some of these vents here to get some of the dust out. Okay, so before we put the brushes back in, what I want to do is spin the blade and you should be able to see the commutator spinning inside there. And it does, everything spins freely, nothing's bound up. So I can go ahead and put the brushes back in now. Now these particular brushes have a little, two little tabs, so you have to put this in a certain way. Pretty much just drop in there. Just put the cap back on. You could take the switch housing apart if you wanted. I'm not going to on this one. The switch seems to work fine. The switch to turn the laser on and off seems to work fine. You could take it apart and blow it out and make sure there's not an accumulation of dust in there, but as long as it's working, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Okay, one of the little things that I'd like to fix on this is the miter gauge here. It's kind of loose. There was a little rivet. Looks like it broke off. And rather than trying to drill a hole and thread it and put a screw in here or put another rivet in here, I'm just going to mix up a little bit of five minute epoxy Stick it on there, clamp it on, let it dry, and that should work just fine. Use a little denatured alcohol to clean the surface off a little bit first. Okay, that epoxy's had plenty of time to set up. Go ahead and remove the clamp. Okay, so the next thing I'll want to do here is just do a quick little tune-up on the saw just to make sure everything's square so that when I use it, it cuts nice and straight and square. So the first thing you wanna do is loosen the lock on the miter gauge and set it to zero, which should be 90 degrees to the fence and lock it in place. 
bring the cutter head down, lock it in place. You need to pull the blade guard out of your way a little bit more. And then just grab a square, press the square up against the fence and then bring it into the saw blade. Make sure not to hit against the tooth because that'll push the square out of alignment if it's touching on a tooth. You want it to just be pressed against the blade itself. And then I usually grab a little flashlight. As long as this is pushed up against the fence and it's nice and straight against the blade and there's no gaps and the blade is square and check both sides. So this saw is already dialed in for 90 degrees. But if you did find it was a little bit out of alignment, it's pretty easy to adjust. And do the lock, rotate it whatever direction you need to to get it into 90 against the square here. Lock it down. And then there's a little screw right here. It's a little sight glass that has a little crosshair on it. And then you would just loosen that and then adjust that back to zero. And that would be set for 90 degrees on a straight cut. Another thing you'll want to check is to make sure that the fences are coplanar with each other or aligned up with each other. Easiest way to do that is just press a straight edge against the two. And if you find that they're out of alignment, there's usually a couple bolts to loosen up and you can move those around a little bit. The next thing you'd wanna check is if the blade is vertically aligned. But same idea, go ahead and lock the blade guard back, bring the cutter head down and lock it in place. And check to see if the blade is square relative to the table. And if you need to make any adjustments, Kind of the same idea, bring it to where it is square. And there's a little screw here with an arrow. And then you would loosen that, adjust it into square, and then tighten it back down. And then do the same thing for 45 degrees. So unlock the bevel, tilt it to 45 degrees, lock it back down. Check for 45 degrees relative to the table. Make any adjustments there you need to as well. And that's pretty much it for tuning it up. You can kind of micro dial it in as much as you want. But that's just a quick overview of tuning up a miter saw. It'll help you get straighter, more accurate cuts. Now the final thing that I'm going to do is just give this a, a quick wipe down with some denatured alcohol just to clean any gunk off of it. And then we can plug this thing in and see what it does. Okay, time for the moment of truth, huh? Okay, so that's pretty much it. The entire project cost me about $3. And that was just for the plug. Well, there was a saw blade, but saw blades don't count. You have to buy those anyways. But for just a few dollars and a little bit of time, you can have yourself a good starter saw if you can get your hands on a used one or dig one out of the trash like I did. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, remember this guy? It's that old beat up blade that came off of that saw we just refurbished. If you end up buying a brand new saw, you open the box, there's a new blade that came with the saw. I'm going to show you the only thing that those new saw blades are good for using this old blade. Yeah! Hi! Yeah! Hold in one! <laughs>